Okay. Now, as you can see, I have these two clips here. That has been sent over. Let me zoom in my timeline here. We'll start with this clip. Simple clip. It's just a car going by. We'll, let's go to our setup first and go to our project settings tab. And I'm going to click de-interlace my renders and my previews because this footage needs de-interlaced. So, now let's go to our secondaries tab and enable it. Go to our preview so you can see what's going on. Now we have our scene. So well, let's just turn this into a simple day nighttime scene. Let's turn it into a simple daylight scene. So we're going to have to use a vignette for that. So let's go down to vignette and check the vignette box and go to user shape. Instead of square or circle, we're going to use a custom shape this time. So let's zoom in here and let me draw a quick mask around this sky. Now that I've got that drawn, I want to go up here and I want to attach my shape, and that attaches it. Now I can go back to my secondaries, and you can see that if you look close, I have this vignette, or this user shape drawn. So now I can go in here and adjust, let me lighten this up a lot. Let's go back to my geometry tab and give it some softness, like so. Maybe you soften it out a little bit right around in this area. Now, basically, quickly, as you can see, up here in the left corner, we have a basic daylight to nighttime, nighttime to daylight scene, evening to daytime. And, you know, it looks pretty good. So now all we'd want to do is go to our render queue, okay? We have this one clip selected. I would say add selected and it would add it to my render queue. Now you can say it's if you can see it's queued and I'd want to start render. But I'm not finished yet. Let's we'll go work on this clip so I can demonstrate some keyframing. Let's go back to our secondaries tab and enable them. Okay? I'm going to use a, a vignette, but I'm going to use a custom user shape. Okay? Just like last time. Now let's go in here. Let's go to the beginning of our clip. Let's go back to our setup and make sure we're de-interlaced, and we are. So now what we want to do is we're going to draw a shape around this bird. And let's, let's have a good place to start. Right here looks good. So let's start, and we will draw a shape around our little birdie here. I'm going to do a fast job. I'd expect you guys to do a much better job. Now we have that up, I'm going to increase my softness, like so, and I'm going to attach it. Now we can go back to our secondaries, and we can see we have this shape attached, and I can um, bring out the saturation and make our little chicky go black and white. Now you can see we need to go to our geometry tab and adjust our edges here. I'm going to grab my edges, my softer outer edges here, bring them out a little bit. Now, our little chickadee is black and white, and everything else is in color. So what we want to do is, I'm going to go up to my timeline, go down and select Add Keyframe, which is or Control 9. And when you do that, you'll see this little keyframe is added right here. Okay? I'm going to move forward in my timeline a couple frames, like that. And I'm going to adjust my shape back up like this. And if you notice, when you try to do that, it snaps back into place. It won't let you move anything. Why is that? Well, that's because you got to add a keyframe first. So go back up to your timeline menu, select Add Keyframe, and then adjust your shape. And you can see my shape stays right where it should be. Adjust this a little more. A we'll scroll forward a few more frames here. And we'll see that it's off just a little bit at the bottom, so we'll go up to timeline, add another keyframe. And we'll adjust our shape again. You can select several points by clicking and dragging around the, the lot of them, like that, and you can adjust and drag, and we'll adjust all of them. Let's go forward. Now let's scroll back through there. 
you can see our shape is going right with our chickadee there. So let's scroll forward a little bit more to where it's off a little bit. It looks pretty like it's pretty much off down here in the bottom right corner of the chick. So we'll add another keyframe and adjust our shape. Like so. Go forward a little bit more. Right there. Let's add another keyframe. Now this is I'm showing you the manual way of doing this. Because this is the most accurate way you're going to find. I like to work all manually in shape. I mean in um, color. Unless it's just the clips are too long. Move forward again. Looks like we're off the heads off there. So we'll add another keyframe. Or hit control 9. And we'll adjust our shape. This edge needs adjusted. Here, this top edge needs adjusted. Okay. Looks like right there we're off, so let's go in here and add another keyframe and adjust it right here. Like so. A little off right there. Let's add another keyframe. Now, if you want to remove a keyframe, you just go to remove keyframe. Now, if or if you go back over your keyframes and there's one messed up, you can't just adjust it like you do in Final Cut. You have to go back up to the option Change Keyframe. So you can see if I come back and right here on this keyframe, when I get on it, it highlights itself blue, you can see. If I wanted to change this keyframe, if I found out it was off, I'd have to go up to the Timeline and select Change Keyframe. Then do my adjustments. So now we've, we've keyframed these frames through here. Let's see, there's a little bit off right there you can see on this frame, so let's add another keyframe and adjust this one. Like that. Okay. So now let's set our end point right here by hitting the I key. And we'll hit set it out point here by hitting the O key. Now, let's see if we can go back through here and find any places that need adjusted. That right there's got a little yellow on it. Let's add a keyframe here and adjust this side. Like so. I don't want to finesse it too much because you guys will get bored watching. Okay. Let's see if there's anywhere else that's off pretty bad. Now see this keyframe here, you see I'm on this keyframe and you can see there's some yellow. So I want to adjust this keyframe that's already been set. So I'll have to go to timeline, change keyframe. And boom. I clicked inside the canvas after I clicked change keyframe and it changed it up and outlined it for me. Color's pretty smart about that kind of thing. It looks at the keyframes before and after and tries to guess. Right there's another one that needs changed. Looks good. Let's zoom in our timeline. So we can see our keyframes better. Now if you look right here, you can see our keyframes. All the keyframes we've set. And if we now when I go up to timeline, add keyframe, you can see it added another one right there. I can go in and adjust my shapes. Okay, now that's going to be good enough, I think, just for th these purposes. There's a few little spots off that I need to adjust around the edges, like right here. I'm picky about this kind of thing, guys. You just have to look over me. Of course, you got to be. If you're doing this for a living, you have to be picky, or they, they won't put up with you, because too many people out there will be. If you're not. Okay. Now let's go back to our secondaries. Now we can see right here that between our in and out points that we've keyframed, we have totally desaturated our chick. If I play it, you can see it's, the shape sticks right with it. It looks pretty good. There's a few little edges. Like, uh, let's see. If you find a little edge that needs adjusted, like right there, go back to your geometry tab. Man, add another keyframe. Man, adjust what needs adjusting. 
Like that. If you absolutely have to, you can have keyframe every frame, you know? Now, there's a little bit of yellow right there, so let's change that keyframe. Looking pretty good. There's a little bit of edge fringe on that, but I'm not going to worry about it. Back to our secondaries. Now we have pretty much our little chick desaturated, or we could change colors if we wanted to, you know. Now see, there's a spot right there that really needs adjusted, so we'll change this keyframe because we've already got one set there. Do the top and the side. Okay, that looks a little better. Okay, let's go to our secondaries. Now, as you can see, our little chicken is desaturated. Now, if you want to do more work, just go to your second secondaries tab. You can see you have eight tabs. You can go to your second tab. Enable it. Let's try to work on its feet a little bit. Let's get the eyedropper and see if we can isolate out the orange feet. See, that's not going to work. Let's try another spot. looks pretty good let's see if we can adjust our sliders now okay that's looking pretty good all except for that little spot there and I can get rid of that so let's up our saturation a lot well, now her the chickadee's feet's popping and if you notice that's kind of bring in some fringe into the outer edges of our chicken and we can go into our geometry tab and we can fix all that make sure you go back into your shape one before you go to the geometry tab and now you can go up and work on it as you like let's get try to get some of that out there now if you notice, we've got our feet of the chickens popping a little bit better. Um, it's desaturated. Now right here you can see that it's over, going over a little bit, so we'd want to change that keyframe. Like that. There. Now our feet's popping, our chickens desaturated, and we have all these keyframes set. That is how you manually keyframe something. In our next video, I'm going to go over manual trackers. And let me tell you something. Trackers, manual trackers in color are brilliant. They are brilliant. And I can't wait to go over them with you. Um, I really can't because they are a brilliant, brilliant way of doing manual trackers. And I hope they incorporate this method into future versions of other Final Cut Studio applications. Because it, basically it's just tap. All you got to do is tap per frame to set your tracker. You go frame to frame and just tap the spot that you want to track. Instead of having to adjust a tracker point, you see, you just tap. And it's really hard to explain, but it's really brilliant. So anyways, here now we have all of our keyframes set, laid that we laid manually. Let's go to our render queue. Let's zoom back out our timeline first. Let's select our chickadee clip. And let's go to our render queue. And we'll add this one. Now we have both of these clips selected and added to our render queue. All you have to do is start render. And it's going to go through, as you can see, mine's going to take care of it pretty quick. Now remember, not the whole clip is, it, we didn't, we didn't um, keyframe the whole clip, just this middle section. So if you see the chicken, the, the color going off and all crazy at the beginning and end of the clip is because we just keyframed the middle as an example. Okay, so now we've got both of these completed. What do we do with them? Okay, go to File, Send to, Final Cut Pro, and boom, and it send us, uh, sends it over to Final Cut Pro as a sequence. Here it is, sequence. It'll have the name of your sequence, whatever you named it, and it'll say From Color. And if you double click it and open it, Right there we are. There's the spot we um, keyframed. You can see he's desaturated and his feet are popping pretty good. And up here, here's our day for night clip that we changed from nighttime to daytime. And now, as you can see, I barely have anything to even render. 
And I just got a little little proxy render here that I got, would need to do. So that is basically how you manually keyframe in color with a complete round trip workflow through Final Cut Pro. Stay tuned for my next few color vids. Um, I promised a long time ago I was going to get more in depth and do a color series and I'm starting to try to put that together for you guys finally. So stay tuned. I hope you come back and uh, we'll see you next time.